In part four of this lecture, we will discuss the languages that first appeared in the 1960s, PL1, Snowball, Simula, and BASIC. In the 1960s, there was a huge amount of interest in developing new programming languages. Many of them, like Snowball, were special purpose languages, but there was also a large effort to find a universal programming language that could be used for any programming task, and this led to, among other languages, PL1. PL1 was intended to combine the abilities of Fortran and COBOL, being a language that could be used for either scientific or business computing. It had a syntax very heavily influenced by Algol, which made it much more readable than either language. PL1 was a very complex language that could take a semester to learn and a lifetime to master. Despite my own experience in it, taking a semester to learn the language and another two semesters in which I used it, it remains a language in which I am not comfortable to program without the manual at hand, and I would not say that about any other language in which I have that much experience. Comments in PL1 begin with a slash and an asterisk, and end in an asterisk and slash, just as in C. The main program begins with procedure options main, and other than the appearance of the options main, looks like any subsidiary procedure. Procedures can appear anywhere within the program, and you could write a procedure right in the middle of the code of another procedure, although this can create major readability problems. There aren't integers, there are fixed numbers, which can actually have a specific number of decimal places. Integers are fixed numbers with zero decimal places. Many key words, note that they are not reserved, can be abbreviated, such as DCL for declare, or PROC for procedures. The overall syntax is much easier to follow than that of earlier languages. You will notice that in the previous slide we used getList, and here we use putSkipList. GetList does unformatted reading, and putSkipList does unformatted writing on a new line. Read and write are also used, but only for binary files. As you should expect for so complex a language, its compiler is huge and is pretty slow. And the same can be said for the object code that it generates. And the complexity made it difficult to learn, and this made it difficult to find programmers who were competent in it. There was some success with it, and there were companies that used it. But the PC era and the enormous difficulty in creating a compiler for the early PCs helped finish it off. PL1 had some features that found their way into other languages, such as pointers and exception handling. Snowball was a programming language developed for string processing. It was developed by David Farber, Ralph Griswold, and Ivan Polanski. It was one of several languages developed for that particular purpose. But what made it stand out was the fact that it included string patterns as a standard data type. Its development culminated in Snowball 4, which was a powerful tool in text processing. In the late 1960s and 1970s, other languages were developed for this purpose, including Awk and Perl, which became far more popular. Simula was developed in Norway by Ole Johan Dahl and Kristen Nygaard. For all practical purposes, it was a superset of Algol, and it was developed specifically for doing computer simulations, something that had become a popular application in the scientific community. It is considered the first object-oriented language and it introduced the concept of the object and the class. Dartmouth College was the first college to require a computer literacy course. And in the 1960s, computer literacy meant learning how to program. In the 1960s, programming courses usually involved Fortran, or maybe PL1 or COBOL, and it meant working with punch cards on batch processing systems, none of which was user-friendly, and certainly not for English and history majors. That required a language that was somewhat easier to learn, which meant a fairly simple language, and it meant a computing environment that was easier to use, and that meant working on an interactive system, something that was not so common in the 1960s. 
Kemeny and Kurtz designed the basic language, its interpreter, and the Dartmouth time-sharing system, the interactive system on which it ran. These were implemented by a team of students working under Kemeny and Kurtz's supervision. The language included many features from Fortran 2, and it was also influenced by Algol, which was the inspiration for many of its interactive features. The language was easier to learn than Fortran, and programs written in BASIC were definitely easier to get up and running. The language was ported to the Digital Equipment Corporation's PDP computers, running the RISTIS operating system, which was actually written in BASIC. This was the version of BASIC and the programming environment that so many college students used in the 1970s to learn programming. This was my second programming language after Fortran. The first program that I wrote in BASIC Plus, as DEX implementation was called, was a version of tic-tac-toe the player played versus the computer. Basic programs back then were line-oriented, and the line numbers were sequential. If the line number for a statement was before the previous line's number, it meant that this line was intended to appear before the lines with larger line numbers. Repeating a line number meant that you were replacing the line. The input statement printed a prompt to the user and allowed him or her to enter a value. In the original Dartmouth BASIC, variables could be only a letter or a letter followed by a digit. The dollar sign that you see in line 10 means that the variable holds a character string. The absence indicates that the value is numeric. The semicolon after the word in line 20 means that the value appears immediately after the string. If a comma appeared, it meant that the value appeared tabbed over after the string. BASIC had for loops instead of do loops that ran until the next corresponding next statement. Since the for loop in line 50 uses i as a counter, the statement next i ends the loop. LEN and LEFT are examples of string processing procedures, returning the length of the string and the leftmost n characters of the string. In the 1970s, there was an effort to make languages simpler and to ensure that syntax and semantics were tied together better. The 1970s led to two languages that became extremely popular, Pascal and C. Despite their popularity, neither language added to the many new concepts of programming language design. There was an effort to add mechanisms to implement data abstraction, concurrency, and verification. Clue introduced the idea of the cluster, which is similar to the object and the constructor, a method called to help create an object. The issues of concurrent programming first got addressed in the 1970s, and efforts were made to deal with, among other things, the synchronization issues involved. MESA was developed at Xerox PARC to support modular programming and a few operating systems related concerns exception handling, and synchronization. This allowed its use to write programs that could run concurrently and cooperatively. Euclid was also developed at Xerox PARC and was intended for writing verifiable programs. Wirt and Hoare developed the Algol W compiler and later developed Pascal. Pascal's structure and smaller size made it a great language for teaching introductory programming it was also used to illustrate algorithms. At the same time, it lacked many features that programmers would normally want in a programming language. There was no string type, although you could set up arrays of characters. Separate compilation was not possible, and its input-output facility was not that powerful. Over the years, there were extensions of the Pascal language created that addressed these concerns. UCSD Pascal was developed at the University of California, San Diego. They added features such as the packed array of characters that allowed the program to store more than one character in a full word and manipulate them as a unit. When Philippe Kahn created Turbo Pascal, packed arrays became strings. He also added units to a later version of the compiler and a more practical way of handling input and output, including text and binary files. Pascal fell out of favor in the 1990s as students started learning C, 
C++, and Java. Dennis Ritchie developed C to simplify the job of writing a new version of Unix for the PDP-11 mini computer. It was based on BCPL and B, where the only data type was the word. C offers four data types, the character, the integer, the float, and the double. It also offered three modified versions of the integer, unsigned, short, and long, and their size was all linked to the data lengths offered by the computer on which it ran. The basic statement in C is the expression, terminated with a semicolon. This made the assignment operator just another operator from the compiler's perspective, which gave greater freedom when writing programs, as did its loose data typing, which allows programmers to use data items in ways for which the data type was not designed. You could multiply characters, use integers to hold the ASCII values of characters, and even do arithmetic with pointers. All of these encouraged the programmer to write code that did not meet modern day standards for reliability. C was considered a middle level language given its loose data typing. I have often referred to it as assembly language with nicer syntax. C++ does better type checking in many regards and creates code that is a bit more reliable than C, although it is questionable by how much. As we mentioned before, various attempts were made to introduce data abstraction, concurrency, and verification to programming languages. This led to Clue, which introduced the idea of the cluster, which is similar to the object and also the constructor. Mesa was developed at Xerox PARC to support modular programming and exception handling and synchronization issues. Euclid was also developed at Xerox PARC and was intended for writing verifiable programs. 